Welcome to Perspectives, a podcast where the clergy women of the First United Methodist Church of San Diego share their musings on scripture, theology, and what it has to do with us. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Perspectives. I'm Reverend Brittany, and I'm here with Reverend Trudy Robinson, and we continue in our series, Everyday Saints. This week, we're going to talk about the gospel according to Matthew, and our text comes from chapter 7, verses 15 through 20. The text says, Watch out for false prophets. They come to you just like sheep, but inside they are vicious wolves. You will know them by their fruit. Do people get bunches of grapes from thorny weeds, or do they get figs from thistles? In the same way, Every good tree produces good fruit, and every rotten tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a rotten tree can't produce good fruit. Every tree that doesn't produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, you will know them by their fruit. Mm -hmm. Right? So Jesus, Mm -hmm. doing the Jesus thing, he's teaching. And this particular text comes from the Sermon on the Mount. It's kind of him almost to the end of the sermon, but the second to last thing that he kind of closes the sermon on the mount up Mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. And so he's been doing a bunch of different teachings about how folks should live and what to do. And in this text, he's talking to them about who they need to be aware of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And coming at the end, it would seem like this is something really important for him to say, Mm -hmm. Um, especially after having done all the teaching. Right. You know? Uh, and he kind of sets forward this idea that there are good teachers and bad teachers, mm-hmm. teachers uh, or prophets that uh, share the truth and prophets that don't. Right. Um, I, Brittany, I have to say, I just wish it were easier to tell the difference, right? Girl. False prophets, um, I've heard that phrase mm-hmm. all throughout my life in the church, and uh, it's it's never clear. And I think about Jesus's context, Mm -hmm. there were lots of people who could have been who he was referring to, right? right? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, he was arguing with the scribes and the Pharisees. They were the interpreters of the law at Mm -hmm. the time. Uh, He he knew the prophets of the Old Testament Mm -hmm. whose role was to to guide people towards the future with God and the future that God would want us to be at. Mm-hmm. Um, even in, in Jesus's time, there were others who were uh, either claimed to be or identified as the long-awaited Messiah. Mm-hmm. There were lots of folks like that who were gathering, who were gathering followers like Jesus did mm-hmm. with their own teaching. And so there were a lot of people that that could have been those false prophets that he's talking about. Mm -hmm. And he he tries to help us with this uh, by this metaphor, right, of of the fruit. Uh, It it only comes from good trees. The good fruit only comes from good trees. Uh, It's not the it's not the bad trees that that give good fruit. I have a jacaranda tree in my front yard. I don't know if it's dead or alive. A who tree? A a jacaranda tree. Beautiful purple blossoms when it's in bloom. But uh, I think in my re-landscaping, one of the roots got damaged. And I'm not sure it's going to make it. I'm not sure. There's a little bit of green. There's a little bit of not. Even that doesn't help that much, Right. Right. Um, but it, the, that metaphor that he uses, the, the good fruit and uh, the good tree, reminds me of the metaphor he uses as he talks about our relationship with God, where the vine and the, you know, the branches. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there seems to me that a, a false prophet, one of the things in order to be a prophet, you have to have that relationship with God. You have mm-hmm. to be uh, connected in a way that you can believe that what you're saying is coming from God. Mm-hmm. But he also then describes that these false prophets um, dress like sheep, right? Uh, but inside they are vicious wolves, mm-hmm. right? Um, which is harder to tell, uh, you know, um, and I think it was you in our conversation earlier, you, you had said these false prophets are not just a nuisance to mm-hmm. God, but they're dangerous to God. Yeah. Say more about that. Yeah. 
Well, I think it's just very interesting that Jesus doesn't just call them wolves because wolves in and of themselves aren't necessarily vicious, right? right? right. I mean, they're mm-hmm. doing what they know to do to That's survive. Right. Right. But in this sense with the false prophets, they know better, right? Yet they do something totally different. Mm-hmm. Um, and the viciousness of it is that it's dangerous, right? Um to create these false prophecies and to say these things and have people follow you can lead to mass destruction, mm-hmm. right? Um, we think about it. I'm using very, very con- like I mean, this is an example, for instance, for me. Some people may think that Hitler, for in- instance, mm-hmm. right, was mm-hmm. a prophet and he had things to say and he was a good leader and he was speaking for God because he used scriptures to justify, yeah. right, yeah. the things that he was doing. Mm-hmm. But really and truly, he was decimating an entire people, right? And so yeah. there is no no good fruit can come from that type of viciousness, yeah. right? That type of um, a wolf in sheep's clothing kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. And so the danger becomes that you use God as your as your standing po- point, right? You use mm-hmm. God as the basis for your argument. Mm-hmm. God is very. Uh, close to people. Like when we talk about our faith, right? Oh, yeah. Our, our yeah. faith is something yeah. that's very intimate. And so when you use that against people, then you can really get them to do nearly anything yeah. or do nothing yeah. at all, yeah. right? Yeah. And so that's the danger that I think that Jesus is talking about mm-hmm. is that false prophecies can lead people to a path of destruction right. that destroy communities because they have not interrogated. Yeah the folks that they're hearing these prophecies from or paying attention necessarily to the fruit that these people are bearing, right? right. So we should have been, folks should have been paying attention to what was happening well before we got to the concentration camps, mm, right? right? And even then once we got right. there, we should have been paying attention. So yeah. that's kind of yeah. an example that I have been thinking about yeah. after I just did a little Dietrich Bonhoeffer read. There so. you go, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, yeah. Um, it, it, with that phrase, uh, dressed like, a sheep dressed as, no, a wolf dressed as a sheep. Mm-hmm. Got to get it right. There's an intentionality behind right. that. There's a full-blooded awareness of what they're doing mm-hmm. when they put on the sheepskin, right? right? Just like Little Red Riding Hood, yeah. right? And the wolf goes and puts on grandma's clothes. Like, he knows what he's That's doing, right? right? That's right. He's That's a- right. attacking yeah. and, and intending to do that. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, that's good. I, I, I am though um, intrigued by the Bonhoeffer mm-hmm. uh, example, right? Uh, Bonhoeffer knew his faith, mm-hmm. knew what was happening in Germany was wrong, mm-hmm. was part of the resistance mm-hmm. to change and to resist Nazism and and Hitler's rule, um, and he ended up coming. Uh, to the point where he knew he could not do anything but assassinate, be involved in the assassination plot of Hitler, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay, so, right, that's really tricky for me. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm glad I'm not living in that day, Uh knock on wood. Um, But it's tricky for me because thou shall not kill. Mm. And, and I know, uh, you know, from Bonhoeffer's writings, it was hard for him to make, to get to that point, mm-hmm. to, to know. And I think if I remember correctly, he was even um, uh, confessional mm-hmm. and asked for forgiveness because he was going to be a part of that, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So, so it's that gray area that I'm really intrigued by. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't always know if the fruits are good or bad. We don't always know that our beliefs are good and bad. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. But but surely our beliefs dictate our actions. Right. Our, our beliefs certainly dictate our actions, right? Mm-hmm. And so the action is what the fruit bears. That's that's the, the correlation, right? It's yeah. that yeah. the fruit are our actions, yeah. right? Yeah. Because when you're stuck between... Yeah. The, the an individual versus the, the collective whole. Right. I always think. I mean, right. how much more damage can we do, or how much more good can we do? Yeah. Again, yeah. I'm glad that I wasn't put in that situation, and I'm not a Christian ethicist, mm-hmm. but I understand. Um, I understand the internal battle that he must have been going through, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, in in his hope to produce good fruit. 
so it, we've been talking about these these uh, men, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Hitler and Bonhoeffer, mm -hmm. um, because they have a certain presence. Yeah. Um, I, I, do you think we would ever claim to be false prophets? Y you know, the people mm -hmm. who have a very small footprint, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, I, I don't I don't know if we would or not, but I know we could be fooled by them. Mm -hmm or we can follow the right ones, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, and I think it's really interesting to have the idea that our beliefs come, our, our actions come out of our beliefs. I think that's very true. Yeah. Um, and I think our, our bad, bad beliefs mm -hmm. can have really bad actions. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 You know, the idea, you know, if we, if we think, if we think God is a vengeful, judgmental God and you better do it right, mm -hmm. then that will be how we look at the world. We'll, we'll see the ways in which we are or are not good or right, um, righteous, or how others are good or not. We will be free to judge uh, and think it's a good thing mm -hmm. that we're judging people and helping them come around to a different kind of relationship with the, the judgmental and vengeful God. Mm -hmm. If we think God is a God of grace yeah. and possibility and love, then we'll see possibility. We'll see instances of love. We'll see instances of grace that we have been given and be more inclined to offer that to others. I think. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. I think <laughs> our beliefs inform our actions. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. And I think that, at least for me, when I was at Vanderbilt, I remember thinking that I was the most liberal person that had ever walked. I'm like, I don't need any. I'm, I got it. Like, I know God's love. And then I'm sitting in classes and we're talking about human sexuality. And I was like, I, I, can't, I can't do this. Right? Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that some of my beliefs were informing how I spoke about things, the, the, the ways, the stance that I took and how strong I was in it yeah. until I had conversations with people that pulled me to the side and, and yeah. interrogated yeah. with me, not interrogated me, but interrogated yeah. with me some of these notions and some of these beliefs that were problematic, right? right? right. Because they did come out yeah. in, in yeah. judgment. And yeah. as much as I wanted, as much as I thought I was doing the right thing, I was hurting people yeah. even in my belief, yeah. right? Yeah. Because I thought less of them because right. of whatever. You right. know what I mean? Right, right. So... Maybe maybe that's part of what Jesus is encouraging the crowd to do is mm -hmm. to is to just really um, be smart about it. I yeah. guess I mean in in the easiest way to put it, um, and and don't just swallow everything, but really think through the implications of whatever it is you're being taught or told. Yeah, and and to see the way in which what it, what's good and what's bad, mm -hmm. not just for you but for everybody for for you know, what God would want for all of us. Um, maybe that's part of what he's inviting here. Yeah. I think Jesus is asking folks, and I think that this is for me, the biggest thing in faith in general, mm -hmm. is that if we can't interrogate our faith, if we can't interrogate the scriptures, then we're not really being faithful people because then we're just following blindly. Right. right? And it's, in this text, he's, I think Matthew, the gospel writer, mm -hmm. is essentially saying Jesus' words as, your piety isn't going to save you, right. right? Being able to quote scripture isn't going to save you, mm -hmm. but it's your actions and the, the impact that you leave behind in the world. And so I think Jesus is saying, you need to have a hermeneutic of suspicion. And that means that you need to be looking and investigating and asking these questions of yourself internally and asking these questions of the world around you and the people that you're around as to what the will of God is, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And if we can't do that then we will be led, right, into yeah. paths of destruction mm -hmm. because we haven't really interrogated how does this align with what Christ said? Yeah, yeah. How does this align with what Christ did? Mm -hmm. You mentioned uh, Matthew. Mm -hmm. um, Ma this gospel of Matthew is written to a predominantly Jewish community um, and probably, what, about 100 years after Jesus um, died. And so it's, it's, it's a little, it's not the first gospel, even right. though it's the first in our Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not the first one. And it's written for a specific community. And um, 
And one of the uh, commentaries that we read, uh, Matthew, in this statement from Jesus as he takes Jesus's teachings and puts it in his gospel, um, the commentator says that this is not a, the false prophets are not a code for the Pharisees, but for the Christians, prophets who are around them, right? Mm and and I think about that early moment in the church, right? There, Jesus had followers who told some people, who told some other people, who had Paul around there to spread it all across the Mediterranean world, you know. And there were a lot of different people talking about Jesus, mm-hmm. and there was no orthodoxy. Yeah. There was just ideas and thoughts, and it was such a variety Mm -hmm. of beliefs that were happening. It really wasn't until Constantine came along that we, that we began to need orthodoxy for, for who we are, which is that, that orthodox, the, the right belief, right? right? And I am, uh, you know, this is a, a series on everyday saints, and I think about the many saints who were once called heretics, Mm -hmm and who are now considered to be saints. Mm -hmm. And to see those moments in our history where there were junctures in the road Mm -hmm. based on our belief. And depending on which side of the answer to that belief you fell on, Mm -hmm. you were either right and orthodox or you were a heretic Mm -hmm. and not. Um, And depending on uh, which side you know, one side had had some saints that the other side called heretics, right. and vice versa, mm-hmm. right? Um, so, so the false prophets. I mean, if we take it to to more modern times, or or even just further on in the history of Christianity, false prophets um, can be just those people who have not good beliefs, mm-hmm. right? and are doing bad things because of them, mm-hmm. or what is perceived to be bad things. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not just those junctures of orthodoxy, but um, politics played an awful lot mm-hmm. in some of those decisions as to who's a an heretic and who's a, who's a saint right. in the early church. Um, Joan of Arc, uh, St. Joan of Arc, mm-hmm. lived in the Hundred Year Wars. Uh, she was put on trial for heresy. She's a saint now, mm-hmm. right? But she was put in trial for heresy. Mm-hmm. She was burned at the stake for heresy. Mm-hmm. And it was largely because she was having visions of who would win the Hundred Year War, mm-hmm. you know. And in fact, her her trial for heresy was because she was accused of having blasphemed by w- wearing men's clothes. Mm-hmm. There's an interesting charge. Um, <laughs> me and my jeans. Okay. <laughs> um, a, a, of uh, accused of having acted upon visions that were demonic, mm-hmm. right? Uh, of refusing to submit her words and deeds to the church for approval, Mm -hmm. Um, she claimed that she would be judged by God alone. Mm -hmm. That idea back then put her on the heresy trial Mm -hmm. and burned her at the stake. (laughs) Sure did. (laughs) Yeah, right? So... uh, uh, so for me, that just raises the question again, mm-hmm. how do you know what's a false prophet? How do we know the beliefs we have that we feel strongly about and others feel strongly about that have the absolute opposite belief? What the heck do we do with that? Well, it's the nuance, and I think it's the mm-hmm. fruit. It's and the I think it's the intention also. Yeah. Yeah. I think that the, the false prophets, right, mm-hmm. They will come to you dressed like sheep, Mm -hmm. but inside they are vicious wolves. So their intention is already off, right? Um, The fruit, I think, that we bear, Mm -hmm. right? I think um, Jesus was called a blasphemer, right? Mm -hmm. He was called a blasphemer. Jesus would have been considered a heretic of the Jewish traditions Mm -hmm. based on the Pharisees, right? Mm -hmm. I think that it's about what happens, the what comes from the action that's produced, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, what comes from, yeah. what action, yeah, what comes from the actions, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's not a, it's harder, I mean, you you make it harder for me because you're so gracious in your read of, mm. of 
everyone. And I think y'all know what you're doing. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> right, um, right. Because I was going to push back on you. Exactly. On, on of, course that, you right? of, of course you were. Of course you were. Of course you were. Yeah. I think folks know what they're doing. I think some people don't. I think we can fool ourselves into believing we know what we're doing. And, I think and people, to convince ourselves we're right. I think people know what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> personally. Okay. Um, yep. Okay. I think you, if you're a wolf and you yeah. dress like a sheep, you know you're a wolf and you know that you out here trying to confuse the people, mm. right? You're trying to be something to convince them that you're not. But if you're really a wolf and you're just a wolf yeah. and you're yeah. vicious, yeah. yeah, you're just doing what yeah. wolves do. But the problem, right, is that these are the people that are coming to, to say that they're doing something and speaking for God when it causes more destruction yeah. to the yeah. To the yeah. whole, right? Right, exactly. And that's the issue. Yeah. That's my, at least for me. Yeah. If it causes more destruction to the whole, to the entire humanity, yeah. to the community yeah. of people, yeah. then to me, mm -hmm. you're a wolf you that's go. acting like you're a sheep. <laughs> that's just me. Looking at the fruits. I'm all about the it fruits. It is a complicated, a complicated passage. I mean, it seems very straightforward. But I think there's a lot of nuance, it a is. lot of stuff. And I think your point about just needing to really focus on the fruits. What does this produce? Mm -hmm. The beliefs we hold. What is it uh, that I do with those? Mm -hmm. That's really what will evaluate the beliefs we hold. For example, for the United Methodist Church mm -hmm. in the Book of Discipline, mm -hmm. had that clause in about homosexuality being incompatible with the Christian faith, right? Yep. It's in there. How? What was the fruit that produced? What what right. fruit was produced from that? Mm -hmm. People were kicked out of the church. People were excluded from the community. People didn't have a place where they could be their their full selves. The fruit of that clause was not good fruit. Right. So I can't. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Where we are right. now is we're trying to yeah. turn ourselves, right? I'm all about repentance so yes, that we might are. be redeemed. Yes, you are. But now we turn and now we've taken that clause out. How much more good will mm -hmm. come mm -hmm. from that fruit? So I'm going to split the hair just I know a little you're bit about more. To, no, 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 no. Oh, I'm just going to split. The <laughs> Here come grace. Gonna... <laughs> Here come grace. I need a little I mercy. Split... I want to split the hair between fruit. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. I want to be able to say the fruit has got to be based on the idea that God called all of us good. Yes. That God wants all of us to be loved. Yes. That God's grace is everywhere for everyone. Yes. And that's good. Yes. So if the actions you do don't pr produce fruit that, that honors everybody's uh, worth, that honors God's grace, right? That that honors the the love that God's movement is intended to create Hello. and to to expand and to spread all across the world. Then that is not a prophet of truth. Thank you. That's what I'm saying. Ding 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 ding. ding. <laughs> Took us a while. We got there. Yeah, you know, when well, we get in different perspectives. There you go. That's what it's we're supposed helpful. to be doing. It really I is mean, good. Oh, well, that's our perspectives coming from different at uh, angles, but got to the same place. We want to know what your perspective is. So we have some questions for you to think about, uh, and we would love to hear from you uh, and let us know what, you're, what you've been thinking about. But with regards to this podcast, we ask you, who are the false prophets today? Mm. What are their dangerous teachings? Mm, my God. Mm. And what do you do to check the goodness of your beliefs? Mm -hmm. And who do you have to hold you accountable for your actions? We're getting real here, right? Getting real, getting raw. Yeah, it's for the good of all of us. We hope. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> this is a production of First United Methodist Church of San Diego. To learn more about our events and ministries and to access additional learning resources, visit fumcsd.org.